Ryan Schick back on your screen with another one. Here is Star Story Storytime Part 2, so grab a drink or a snack. I'm going to add a lot more details to this one. I figured we'd split this up in two or three parts, depending on how much we get in today's. Just because the Star Wars story is kind of long. I mean, 11 years is a long time of a life legally blind, right? So let's get into it. So I was legally blind at about 26, 27. So let's go further back than that. Let's go back to 07. I was 19, as I mentioned in the last video. That's when I started to notice that my vision was going. There were two other instances that I didn't mention in the last video that had me a little worried. The first being I was in university at the time and I couldn't see the whiteboard or the PowerPoints as clearly as I used to. I used to sit at the back of the back because I was that type of student, but as time went on and on and on, I got closer to the front to the point where I'd lift the desk part and lean over and still strain to see. So that was an indication for me that I needed glasses. At the time, I was working two jobs because OSAP, which I call the student loan mafia, pretty much was like, you know the money we gave you last year? Yeah, run that back. You made too much at Zara, so you don't need the OSAP. Plus, you're on your own for this year's tuition. So I had to pay for the year's tuition and pay back the student loans from last year's tuition. It was very stressful. And I was just like, I can't afford to fail, literally. So let me just sit at the front of the class and focus intently. And I couldn't focus, literally. So that's why I was like, you know what? Between that, not seeing the buses in Brampton and failing my G2 not once but twice. And G2, for those of you who don't know, because a lot of you guys aren't from Canada, is the second stage of our driving exam. So the first is written, then you get the second license, then you get fully certified. I failed that second test not once, but twice. Maybe it's a good thing your girl's legally blind. I might be saving lives by not driving. So those are three instances where I'm just like, I need glasses, I'd feel more confident while I'm driving, I'd be able to see what's going on in school, and I'd make sure that I'm not getting on the wrong bus. But unbeknownst to me, something very serious was a brewing underneath. So let's fast forward. Another notable moment was when I was 25. This was a time that my vision loss hit me the hardest. As I mentioned in the last video, I was in a situation I had no business being in. That ending plus being fired from a job and I've never been fired before hit hard. And one thing about Star Guards is stress impacts how fast your deterioration goes. So be very careful. I didn't know that at the time. And even when I was 29 and I was stressed, I couldn't help it. So both of those times I had the worst progression of my vision loss. So. I was dealing with that plus the milestone of 25, kind of like, what am I doing with my life? This is not at all where I thought I'd be at 25. So on my birthday night, I was wearing like my chill outfit, like the fit that I wore to get there. I don't drive, so it wasn't like I was gonna come there in my dress and my heels. So I came in my boots, cause I'm a November baby, so it was brrr, it was cold. I remember halfway through the dinner, my friends like, go change your dress. I bought this beautiful white dress, this sexy little number from I want to say nasty gal because I used to love shopping at nasty gal and I didn't even want to bother putting it on that's just how out of it I was I didn't care I felt like I was entertaining the people around me instead of enjoying the company that I had I remember going downstairs and putting on the dress and putting on my heels that were so sky high it was ridiculous like I couldn't wear that now thinking the entire time like what am I doing this all for I just want to go home and call, curl up in a ball and cry because this sucks and I went upstairs and I took pictures and I did feel better in the company of people in my pretty little white dress and whatever. But I remember that was the first time where I felt truly sad about my vision loss. Like this is ruining my life. Obviously I don't feel that way now, but for years I always felt like when I was sad it was because of Star Guards disease. I feel like Star Guards in a way, I don't want to go as far to say is ruined, but it definitely shaped my 20s. And 20s are supposed to be that in between where you're having fun and you're still coming of age. I can't do things in my 30s that I could get away with in my 20s, right? So sometimes I mourn those lost years. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to what, 22, 23? My optometrist, the one that you saw in the video I did last year, I'll link it over here and down here. She had invited me to come into her office to demo the OG first gen of the Eastside Eyewear. Now back then I was sitting at maybe 20, 40, 20, 60 vision, which what I would give for that nowadays since I'm way past 2400. I 
was very apprehensive. This device was huge. The remote control was this big. No cap. I'm not even exaggerating. I should put a picture somewhere here. And then it was the same Cyclops looking device. So when I first brought it home, I'm just like, she expects me to go out with this where and do what? But I did. I went outside with it. I used it at home. I used it to study. I used it to read, to surf the web, whatever. One night I was using it. My mom came home. She's like, what's that on your head? Now, mind you, initially when I told my mom that I had starter's disease, her first response is that you're gonna let these doctors tell you this? And I was like, what? But for those of you who are not Caribbean, I think you should know that in my culture, mothers raise their daughters to be very independent and strong. Like, if I was crying about something, mom's like, you're gonna be a suck about it or you're gonna figure it out. Like, it's that type of tough love, which I think different. I remember telling her I have this eye disease and the doctors like as I was going through those seven specialists and she kind of being like oh you don't let them tell you that like they're just trying to get more money from you for these glasses and I was so frustrated because I was just like it's not about them getting more money from me for a prescription of glasses. It wasn't until she saw me wearing that device that it tripped her out and she freaked out and even up till today I can't go a week without her calling me and asking about my vision, whereas back then, when I needed it most, she wouldn't even ask me about it. Which brings me on to another subject, my dad. My dad, as far as vision loss goes, it's impacted me way more since he's been gone. It's been about four months since he passed away, and I've cried endlessly about this. Losing him and also not being a, as good of a daughter as I could have been to him. I had my reasons, I'm not going to get into it here. but. For the sake of this video as part of my Stargard story, what I will share is that he started to lose his vision when I was about 25 and that's when he began to get interested in Stargard's disease and what it was because he thought he had it. I kept telling him that he didn't have it because of the genetics of it and the age difference. Little did I know you can be diagnosed way later on in life and have the undercurrents of it. He did wear glasses from time to time to read or because he was always in the dark because he liked that vibe. But it wasn't until I was about 25, 26 and he started to lose his vision. And it happened quick. Like when I tell you within a year he had lost his job, he was on disability. Thank God he worked where he worked for 15 years. So the disability was enough to supplement his life because it's not like that in Canada. I know a lot of people tell me just go on disability, go on welfare, go on SSI. It's not like that here. I can't just go on that. And why would I want to do that when I can be independent? Another story for another day. Here I am experiencing my vision loss and then he's experiencing vision loss too, but it's happening to him so much quicker than it's happening with me. I know it's because our lifestyles are different. I'm far more healthy than he was. I'm not gonna get into it because I don't know my family's business out there, but there were extenuating circumstances that led to his vision loss and the progression of it so quickly, but it was still astounding to me. It was when he was legally blind and walking with a cane that I was just like, uh. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. When I was 25, 26, I was angry at him. We didn't have the best relationship, and for him to ask me four or five years into my diagnosis what star disease was, I felt like it was empty because I had already, for one, told him all of this when I was initially diagnosed, and even before I had the diagnosis when they were just throwing the term around, and he was just like, oh, oh, okay, well, you're gonna get glasses? Oh, that's good. Like, he didn't really care up front. I felt so abandoned because I'm just like, you're supposed to be my parent. But then when he passed away, I started to feel very guilty because I'm just like, I'm here sometimes spending one, two hours in the DMs responding to you guys about your vision loss. And I didn't give my dad that time of day because I was mad at him. I don't know if it would have made any difference had I given him that same level of compassion being that he's my blood, my family. But it just goes to show you that I, I know why I did what I did and now that I'm on the other side, I wish I hadn't. I had my reasons so I don't necessarily regret it, but it sh it's still part of my story and it's still really hard to have a parent who went through the same thing as you, but you can't relate to. If you can, meet someone in the flesh, in living color, that has your disease. I know I'm truly blessed. I've met many people with Stargardt's disease, not just on the web, but also in real life. And that's thanks to the Foundation Fighting Blindness and the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, so the FFB and the CNIB, both of which have allowed me to 
meet people through their events and mixers, but also they gave me contacts when I started the blind youth group to connect with blind people that were like me, that were my age. One thing I always mistook, and a lot of people do who don't know about like legally blind, is you usually think blindness or vision loss is something that happens to old folks, like something that happens later on in life. But unfortunately, it can hit you at any time. And the more I dove into this world, the sea of sight loss, the more I realized it affects more and more people that are like me than I could ever imagine. One of the hardest things about losing your vision is feeling isolated in the process. Like I said, my mom's a Caribbean mom. My dad was just doing his own things. It wasn't like I had the prevent, the parental parachute to help me as I was falling. My cousins were supportive and my friends were learning as I was learning, but there was no one in the trenches with me that knew what was going on. It wasn't until I started going to these events and then I created my own youth blind group, which was the first one in Toronto, and I hope someone picks up the baton and continues where I left off. It wasn't until I started to meet people in person and exchange inside jokes that only they would get that I really felt connected instead of isolated. So as you know, I used to be cure obsessed. It was insanity. I don't know how I thrived. I probably didn't thrive. I was just trying to survive. Now it's the opposite. You'll never catch me on Google typing in cure for Stargus disease. If someone sends me something or says something, like my friends are more on top of it, like try this supplement or I heard about the Oculus or they're doing this in this country, but it's never me looking anymore, which is so liberating. I feel like I tethered myself down. I anchored myself in the past when I was so persistent about finding a cure when there wasn't one. Maybe one day there will be, but that's not where my focus is. I remember when I participated in a couple studies that the people would be like, wait, how did you get here today? Cause I didn't have a dog or a cane. And this is years ago and I still don't have a dog or a cane. And that's always stuck in my mind because I'm just like, these researchers have seen hundreds if not thousands of people with my eye disease or something similar. For them to be surprised that I was able to get here on my own lets you know that usually people who have the level of deterioration I do aren't this independent. So there's something about me that's still fighting. It's a Scorpio. It's a Scorpio, I tell you. That's always been something that has pushed me. Even in the job I have currently, I make a lot of mistakes more than I'd like to admit. Anytime that I do well though, I remind myself that I'm doing this in spite of my sight. Before the Rona, there used to be this thing called Vision Quest and each year it'd be this conference with thousands of people, researchers, specialists, tech developers, optometrists, anyone who is visually impaired or cares and works in the department of visual impairment would be there and it was just such a good vibe they would even sponsor people so that their accommodations would be covered if they were traveling from out of town there was times in the session where you could go off into different seminars so all the younger people i think under 26 or something went into one room and we had some couple we had a few people speak on their experiences of being visually impaired and there, that's where I decided that my one thing was going to be I'd create a blind youth group. Each of us said we were going to create a thing. Some other person said they were going to start an initiative at their bank. Somebody else said they were going to con coordinate with the accessibility department of their work. Like, it was such a good vibe of meeting people that cared and wanted to have an impact on the blind community. Speaking of, I've had some horrible experiences with blind people. I've had blind people tell me that I'm not blind enough, that I'm pandering, that I am allowing sighted people to have their way because I'm babysitting them and explaining what it's like to be visually impaired instead of letting them learn. And it's just like, who better to teach them than someone who's living it? I don't know. I've had visually impaired people tell me that I'm a, oh, how do they put it? very destructive because I don't have a dog or a cane and I haven't learned braille, even though I've explained a million times that at this stage, I don't need that. When I do, I will take full onus and take on whatever I need to help me. If dog could help me at work, then sure. My problems have to do with seeing details. Dogs are good for transportation. I can get from point A to point C to the moon and back on my own. When I can't, then I will pick one up. But I've had a lot of blind people put that on me the same way sighted people have put glasses or LASIK on me as if I don't know these things exist. Let's wrap up on a light note. As bad as 2020 was, it wasn't a complete write-off to me because of all the opportunities. 
I got to talk to Kion Wo from the Audacious Podcast radio show. Amazing experience. I listen to her podcast now. I love them. It's something about someone who really is passionate about what they're doing and also good at it too that can just get you to be as authentic as possible. And you know, my pod is called Authentic with Alicia, so I'm all about authenticity. Then there was the Jubilee, which a lot of you new subbers have found me from. And that experience was nerve wracking for literally no reason. The interviewer who wasn't on the screen, I don't think, was super sweet, so sweet during the interview process off camera and on. It was just, Jubilee did a very good job of organizing it. I know I complained about them editing out some of the other YouTubers and of course my spot, but it's time. like. How much time like if we it was a three hour film session it was impossible to not cut out as much as they did a couple years back i got to work with two blind brothers that was amazing talking to them was even more uh, personally for me i love the conversation we had before they sent me to the stuff like getting the shirts from them that were super soft was like the icing on top but getting to talk to them and getting to know them and them giving me advice and saying, I can't imagine what it was like to be diagnosed at 21 because they were diagnosed at a younger age. That was just everything to me. They've been on Ellen, they're doing well with their company. You should go support them. Like funds from their brand go to Starbucks Research. So they're paying it forward in a very big way financially and just by their spirit and the energy they bring. The East Side and the Vision Buddy were amazing experiences. Again, for me, it wasn't getting the product or even reviewing it for you. It's the connection and the conversation that I had with the people before the product was sent for review. The Vision Buddy team was super sweet. They're like, if there's anything we can do, this is X, Y, and Z. Their product was amazing. The eSight team took a slot and chunk out of their day to talk to me about what I'm looking for in a device, what their device does, and then going through all all of the functionality of their eSight eyewear, super descriptive and detailed, so that I'd have everything at my disposal for properly sharing that information with you, and also so I could feel confident in sharing it with you. Like the biggest thing about being a content creator, an influencer, I hate that word, is you wanna do it with authenticity. Now I'm sure there's a lot of influencers out here that just take anything for a pretty coin. I'm not one. If I was, I wouldn't be doing this for 10 years with only 10K subscribers. So I'm proud of all of the partnerships and sponsorships I've chosen because they speak to me. And I think it says a lot that I've gotten to work with Eastside and Vision Buddy and Two Blind Brothers and Audacious and Jubilee. And I'm just gonna hold that kind of like, I don't have a YouTube plaque, but in my mind, that's my plaque. And of course, I would love to just YouTube full time. Trust me, did you see the Working While Blind video? But since that's not the case, I'm gonna pivot and look at it this way. And I'm so grateful for all these experiences. I'm so happy that I got to meet these people, to talk with these people, to connect with you, to be who I am in this new truth. It's kind of like what we're dealing with with the pandemic. You can't get back this year or last year, however shifted things have been. The same goes with vision loss but you can make it beautiful and you can use it as a setup to something better. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know if you want to see a part three. <laughs> and until next time, stay blessed, stay sane, stay safe.